Spencer, girl, you see me? Girl, you got to excuse me. I'm all fresh faced today. I'm just feeling real dyke bull dagger tease. Uh, I figured that Candy showed out on social media, so I would pay homage to Candy with this going on. Having a bad headache, girl. Still kind of hungover from the bar last night. And it's Martin Luther King Day, so you know we about to have a good time. All right. <clears throat> Y'all hoes ready? Here we go. Portia, I think acting uh, is okay for you. Me and Portia did a play together, Candy's play. Um, uh, I don't even want to talk about Portia and acting. Keep doing what you're doing. Okay, let's just get into it, bitch, because it's Martin Luther King Day. As much as we all wanted to see Kim Zosiak back for season 10, it is painfully obvious that she do not want to be there. Kim, whenever I watch a scene with Kim, I feel something real hasty in my spirit. Like, it works up my anxiety as if she is in a rush to leave. Case in point, when they was down there speaking to the medium lady and she talking about, I got to call my husband. He supposed to be dropping me off pizza. Kim, y'all was in downtown Atlanta. You live an hour and 40 minutes outside of the city. Your husband should not have been nowhere near the area. Why in the fuck is Croy always like right around the corner so you can start chaos and confusion then make a mad dash out the damn door? You that damn scared somebody gonna beat your ass for the bullshit that you do? That you always gotta have Croy old racist hillbilly ass around? And I'm gonna tell you something because I'm gonna wear Kim ass out when it come to racist hillbilly. I just ain't got to that portion of the show yet. Okay, here's another thing. I'm with y'all and I'm with Candy on that she wanna eat everybody box shit. Kim, don't nobody want that skinny ass funky chicken, okay? Quiet as it's kept, your coochie lips probably about as big as your mouth lips because you look like the type of bitch that don't get vaginal rejuvenation and putting Botox all in your damn twat. Let me tell you something. Candy don't like old hoes. If anybody box she want to eat, it's Brielle's, not yours, okay? Listen, I ain't, let, let, me, let me not even put that out there because Candy is mad with y'all. And I'm going to tell you something. Kim... You full of shit and you fucking lying. And here's why. Candy does a very good job of keeping her composure on social media. Candy don't never get upset and irrational and emotional on social media. Not as much as the other girl. Let me not say never. The way she unleashed on your ass on that text, on that tweet, proves the fact that she ain't like, didn't nobody want to eat your box? And then I was sitting here thinking to myself, First of all, can't nobody eat mouth even fit in that damn wide ass box after you don't push that all them big headed ass hillbillies you call cheering. Um, at first I was gonna say, you know, maybe they were all out and drank wine and got tipsy and was laying on each other and some things were said, but Candy don't even drink. So Kim, I'm with Candy on this one. Bitch, you lying. And Kim, you got a problem with always diminishing somebody's accomplishments. And I'm going to get on your ass about that. Bitch, you lucky I ain't have my red lipstick on. But don't you worry, bitch. I'm still, I'm still honing in and, 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 and uh, bringing in the power of the redness, bitch. I got the red hair, the red background, and the red shirt. So your ass going to get it. Um. Oh. I guess we is to the part of the program where we gonna talk about Kim ass some more. Is it me? Well, do y'all notice Kim go out her way to diminish Nene's accomplishments and relegate her to nothing more than poor black trash? Because that's what you want Nene to be. And perhaps that's what she was at the start of y'all's friendship. She definitely didn't have the things she has now. And I think that bothers Kim. She's in a Rolls Royce. You got to relegate her Rolls Royce to a rental Rolls Royce in a handicap. Rather, she renting it or owning it, bitch. She in it. She in it. Then her house. By every stretch of the imagination, Nene got a nasty house, bitch. And we know good and goddamn well that if there were bugs in the house, they were not roaches. And even if they were roaches... The word association that you're trying to make, Kim, and this is what kind of got me starting to think that you might be racist. 
Everybody know when you say, ooh, somebody nasty, they got roaches. It mean they house nasty, they don't wash the dishes, shit and stuff is everywhere. That's the word association you're trying to get people to gather with this roach thing. And I'm going to tell you something, Sheree, you ain't shit either. Because when um, um, Kim was sitting up there talking to you about them bugs and shit, when she was sitting there talking to you about them bugs and shit, you, 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 like, for you to be a black girl, Sheree, on this show, just certain shit. You shouldn't have let slide. Real Housewives of Atlanta is one of the only shows that has really showed black people being fabulous and just rich and all these kind of things. Why would you sit there and let her say that about that lady? And you know full well the lady ain't got roaches. The house is new. Okay, she had bugs in the ba in the bathroom. Big fucking deal. Kim, your ass don't have bugs too. That's why the fuck you got an orchid man. I just didn't like it. And it's like you just always trying to relegate the things that Nene had because you're the only person who can have it. And what it is is you was used to you being with Big Papa and you being the it girl. And now Nene can do the same things you can do and you feel some kind you don't like it. And I'm going to tell you what the issue is between Kim and Nene. The tides have turned. Okay? When they were first friends, in my opinion, Kim was the rich, fabulous friend. Nene was the okay friend. So, yeah. You know, Kim had a flunky and Nene had something to aspire to. Now that Nene is on the same level as her or beyond, now it's an issue. I mean, now it's an issue. Hold on. This is my auntie. All right, y'all. Moving right along, honey. Going to the damn uh, Bailey Agency. Listen. When Cynthia was having that goddamn back to school drive outside that Bailey agency, bitch, I fell dead to the sofa, bitch. I said, cause shit, ain't no damn modeling ever coming in out of there, so you might as well use it as a Sam's Club distribution center, okay? Yes, honey, shout out to Cynthia Bailey with the only modeling agency that helped feed the kids, support the kids, support battered women, do every other good deed in the world except create models, okay? Um... Is it me, or do we like Cynthia and Will together? I'm going to tell y'all something. I like Cynthia and Will together a whole lot. It's cute. It feels good. And I feel like they really do complement each other. Who I don't like together is Sheree and goddamn Tyrone. Let me tell you something, Sheree. You is a goddamn fool. You don't accomplished way too much to just let the optics of what's going on with you and Tyrone affect your brand and what you got going on. I'm not saying that you can't love the man. I'm not saying prisoners don't deserve love. I'm not saying he's guilty. I'm not saying that um, he's not a good person. I'm not saying all of that. What I am saying is you have worked too hard to rebuild what you have to allow the optics of it all to be a stain on your reputation and your image. You should have been, this the part, shit, quiet as a scalp. You should have pulled a Kenya Moore and kept that shit private. Like nobody would have any real way of knowing you was dating this damn man if you was not taking pictures with him and posting it on social media or if you was not taking collect calls when the camera is there. And listen, Either Tyrone calls are on schedule or the Real Housewives cameras is always at your damn house. Because it seems like whenever the fuck we at Chateau Sheree, that damn phone ring and it's Tyrone running up your damn phone bill. And I'm going to tell you something, Sheree. Girl, listen to me. Because I grew up in the trap. I know so many homegirls who was dating prison men, so on and so forth. You are fucking being used. This man is calling you and loving you good because he don't have shit else to do. He is in prison and he's in there for a long time. Let me tell you something. He's nervous and he's trembling, waiting on you to walk in. He's bored. He needs somebody to visit him. He needs somebody to give him spiritual, emotional, financial support. Okay? He don't found a fool. Because you looking for love and he telling you everything he need to tell you to keep you where he wants you. Because he don't have anything else to do except read books and look at the wall. Okay? 
Sheree, this man don't love you. He is using you. And as every girlfriend I got that dated a nigga in prison, when you held this motherfucker down emotionally while he's in prison, when he get out, you think y'all gonna have y'all happily ever after, and the nigga is gonna show his ass and truly run the street. And another thing, you need to be careful getting your ass on TV talking about he's innocent and I've seen documents. Well, girl, because see, this is the way my investigative brain work. What documents have you seen? Because I'm just putting two and two together and the man said he out flat out right stopped talking to you and communicating you because he didn't want the feds to come your way. Now you talk about you don't see documents so you know he innocent. That says to me, Miss Phaedra Parks, that your hand is in the mix or at least you got knowledge of the illegal bullshit that was going on. You about to fuck around and lose every damn thing you got fucking around with this man. Your ass gonna end up with uh, a broken heart, bad credit, and a high ass phone bill fucking with Tyrone. I know Erica said you better call him, but bitch, that song came out in 2000. Erica don't know what the fuck she talking about in um, 2018. Bitch, you better do like candy. Fuck call and Tyrone, I think you better call someone. Go eat Kim Zosi at Coochie or whatever, cause shit. You keep kicking with her and fool our line and carrying on. You bitch, you better leave Tyrone alone and call someone. Or, or shit, call Candy. <laughs> Sheree, you look manly and candy like the women's letter. I mean, if you need your box lit. You know where to go. I mean, this man can't even lick you from prison. Look, Lord. Hell to the no, to the no, no, no. Listen, let's get down to where everybody want to talk to. Miss motherfucking Embalay. Embalay, in three minutes, you have just ruined whatever semblance of a business that you have. Embalay, you the only person I know that walk off the scene from in their own business. Like, no, I wouldn't have left. I would have put them holes out. But I'm going to tell you something. Embele, you foul, bitch. You, you, girl, you more of a con than goddamn Tyrone. Uh, and you worse than Miss Cleo. Talk about energy cleanser and so on and so forth. You had the nastiest energy in the damn room. And no, bitch, you was not intense. You was just rude and arrogant and ignorant. And I hope the voodoo spirits fuck you up for playing with them. Don't come in and play with the voodoo spirits and you, you, you ain't... Girl, you ain't you look like you ain't even took no classes. You look like you went and got some damn dollar yard fabric from goddamn Joe Ass Fabric. You bought some incense and listened to an Erica Badu CD before them people got there. Now you all in the spirits and they invoking the spirits and girl, but I'm not buying that shit. Embele, you made the room more tense than it needed to be if healing was supposed to be brought about with your rude ass. Now let me ask y'all a question. What do y'all think? about the no phone zone. Listen, I don't believe in micromanaging adults and that shit kind of pisses me off. Don't tell me what to do. All you simply got to say is, for what we're trying to do, we're trying to foster a uh, an environment where everybody's being attentive. I ask that you please refrain from doing the phones. People do got children and care on. You know, everybody was okay with it. Um, Kim and Portia, I mean... Y'all really couldn't have put y'all phones down for 30 minutes. And I get the whole kids thing and the whole pushback. But sometimes I feel like that kids thing is just an excuse some people use. Like, Portia, there was no reason you couldn't have put your phone in the basket. But I'm going to tell you what both of them felt and why they gave pushback. What they felt was, I'm a grown-ass person and you're not going to confiscate shit from me. Like I'm an adult. I know how to put my phone in my bag and not be on it. So that's why they gave her so much pushback. But on to these people with these kids thing. It bring it, it, people with kids. Drop down in the comments and let me know. Is it a a a a a, a crime? For y'all not to have y'all phone for an hour or 30 minutes. I mean, I don't know. I don't have kids. I'll say this. When I attended Candy Burris' wedding, because it was a TV wedding and they didn't want the stuff to leak, security was at the entrance making everybody, you had to check your phone and it was no, a no phone situation because they wanted to, you know, savor all the moments for the production. Sherry Shepard was in front of me. And Sherry Shepard held up the line, not drastically, but she gave security a lot of pushback 
about I'm not handing over my phone, I'm not handing over my phone. Then she played the whole I have a special needs kid card or whatever. And I remember thinking to myself, you don't live in Atlanta. Whomever you left your child with is obviously somebody that you trust and who can handle whatever's going to arise if an emergency arises. Because phone or no phone, you are in Atlanta. Your child is wherever your child is. So if, if I mean, if World War Three is going on with your child, what are you really going to be able to do from here, phone or no phone? And what's going to happen that's so bad that in an hour's time, not getting in touch with you is going to make a difference? And I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking like a person with no child and I just don't understand because I don't have kids. But am I overanalyzing the situation or can people with children not like put their phone away for an hour or whatever or be non-reachable for an hour? Y'all help me understand that one. Nonetheless, um, in Belay, I think your ass was either drunk or high or you was fucking eating the damn sage because your attitude just was not one that was going to foster any kind of understanding. And the shit you were saying out your damn mouth, it was incoherent. It didn't make sense. And it was the, the, the direct reflection of you eavesdropping on these ladies' conversations and already having a predisposed whatever, whatever, about the housewives because who in Atlanta at this point is not familiar with all these ladies? Girl, listen. Candy, Nene, Cynthia. Who else got my number? Candy, Nene, Cynthia. Can you got the email address? Joy Chen, Carlos, Bravo, Andy, all the rest of y'all. Next time, y'all want them to sit down and talk and foster some damn feelings and get an understanding, call the dog, bitch. I know what to say to get it damn started and to foster understanding. Okay! Um, let me tell y'all something. Did y'all see what Emberle said? Uh, I'm gonna tell some secrets. And Cynthia was like, oh, hold on, what secrets? <laughs> she about was gonna tell that your ass had done fool I lied with candy, either that or that you been had done fuck Will and you trying to play all celebrated school girl nights and we see through all that. Yes, honey. Cynthia was real nervous about them secrets, child. I loved it. Um, Portia and Kim hold their hands. What in the entire fuck was that about? Like, I get what it's about, and what it was is we are both walking into the lion's den or whatever, and I need a support, so I'm going to do like this. But it just came off very dykish, very childish, very schoolgirl. Like, what are y'all doing? Y'all look Stupid. And I'm the one good thing Mbale did do is break up the damn scene. Now, Kim, what's with you in this messy side talk shit? And I can't understand. I don't know where the acting begins and reality ends with Kim. Part of me feels like because Kim is in such a rush to film the scene and go back outside to Croy and the Brady Bunch that she's like, when she shows up to the filmings, it's like, let me hurry up and start some confusion so I can go. Because I refuse to believe in real life, Kim, that you don't recognize side conversations amongst a group is rude. And you're the queen of etiquette and this person's being rude. But you doing all this, like, it feels to me that it is very intentional. So my question to y'all is, do y'all feel that it's intentional and it's her working, just trying to make a good scene? Or is she legitimately a bitch? Like, which one is it? Um, and speaking of, baby, Kim had a nasty outfit on, by the way, baby. That red and that pink was sick now, but I'm not going to go up for you about your outfit because you just making me sick right now. I will say this. Nene, you kind of pissed me off this episode, too, because you did what you typically do. When you get called out on your foolishness, you don't defend it with logic. You get loud. You get loud and want to overtalk. What was it that they called you out on? Oh, Portia called your ass out on you having the face. And I'm trying to reconcile with you and you sitting here like this. And she was absolutely right. 
If I'm sitting here trying to explain my portion and you sitting here with an attitude and a unit on your face, that's going to make a person shut down and be like, why the fuck should I be open and vulnerable and exposed and you giving me your ass to kiss? And Nene, what I don't understand about you is that you kick off an energy that says a friendship with you only works if you're the HBIC. Nene, it's coming off like you are all right with folks as long as they're in a subservient role. But the moment they begin to look, get a little clout or to get two legs to stand on or that they don't need you and the power becomes balanced in the relationship, you lose all self-control. Okay? That's why you and Cynthia's relationship, in my opinion, works very well because Cynthia has a subservient energy when it comes to Nene. Then when she started hanging with Kenya and got some, I don't want to say esteem, she got some get up about herself and she started speaking up for herself, you had a problem with that. You had a problem with Candy for no damn reason because Candy came in a boss and didn't have to play second fiddle to you. You had an issue with that and you didn't get over your issue with Candy until you got a little accolades under your belt and now you feel like something. So, when I went to Florida State University and got my degree in economics, them people didn't teach me nothing about psychology, but I know enough about the world to know this. Somebody told Nene she wasn't going to never be shit and she never was going to make it. And for a very long time, she believed it. She believed it. And it probably is something that still haunts her in the back of the mind. I'm not shit. They told me I'm not nothing. And that's why it's so important for you to be the domineering one over everybody else. That's why it means so much to you to have to be the it girl, the one that everybody has to pass through. Baby, I see through it. I don't be friends with so many different people like that. And I just really want you to, now that you're happy and, and, and you got, or are you happy, now that you've accomplished some stuff, like let that shit die down. Let it go. Um, speaking of being accomplished too, with Kenya, I can see that it's the beginning of the end. I never in a million years thought that Kenya's marriage was all the way real, but I'm starting to feel that it is. There is a shift in Kenya's energy. And, and listen, it's the same shift that we saw with Kim Zosiak when she started having them babies and got with Croy. Kim was all into the housewives. Remember her catchphrase was, I'm a black girl trapped in a white woman's body. She was doing all the shopping. When Kim truly got some peace and happiness, that's when she cared less about this show and more about her man. And Kenya, something is changing in Kenya. And I like it. And I will say this. Y'all know I don't never come to the defense of Kenya. Because I don't like her. And I don't like her antics. But right is right and wrong is wrong. And Cynthia asked a very good question when she said, why don't y'all like each other? Right is right and wrong is wrong. Kim, you started with this lady every time. Every time you started with this lady, and I think what has happened, I think it started out with Kim literally showing up to work and just doing the job. I got to come to Sheree House Woman. I got to make a splash. They paying me whatever they paying me to film four episodes. I have no relation with this lady. So let me just create confusion with the person that I have the least emotional ties to. So that's when you, un, in an unsolicited manner, you came for Kenya. I think in that moment, you was just filming. You, you could care less than the hell. Over time, it's become true disdain. Kenya's not wrong in this situation with Kim. And y'all know me, I'm the first person to disproportionately wear Kenya ass out. I'm coming to Kenya's defense on this one. Kenya need to beat the shit out of Kim. To, to be quite honest, if Kenya slapped the shit out of Kim right now, I wouldn't even make a video about it. I, because Kim, you deserve it. You don't came for this lady on some false, it's just for TV shit and it don't spiral out of control and it don't became real hate. Quiet as it's kept, 
I really think Kim and Kenya would be really good friends. I really do. Y'all got a lot in damn common. You want the same damn thing. You both, you y'all both got a lot in common to me. So y'all figure that shit out. I will say this though, Kim, and this is this is what solidified that I think you racist or got something going on. You play that naive rich white woman shit. That you throw things out there to curate the way people look at Nene. Rental Rolls Royce, because she's not good enough to have one for real. We know she's got the money. We know she's got the money. Her fabulous house got roaches. Then that passive aggressive shit you said on camera. I thought you were on drugs. Like, really Kim? And then she's on pills. She's on just like, I just don't. And you know, I'm the first person. Listen, I'm the first person to go in and crack jokes and wear a bitch out and damage a bitch reputation. But it's all laughs, jokes, and the key key. This ain't the key key with you, Kim. It's from a deep rooted place of hatred. And I'm not going to say you, 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 I don't know if you racist or not, but you definitely are, 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 are jealous of Nene, in my opinion. Or you feel like you should be the it girl. Why her? Why her? So let me damage her and relegate her to nothing but poor black trash. So I can feel good about what I'm lacking. I really get that from you. This was supposed to be funny because this was a deep episode. But something about it just got me real serious and sending me into a funky mood. And I'm finna get off this line. Go watch Mary the Medicine and call y'all back. And Bravo, y'all really done fucked us up by putting Mary the Medicine permanently on damn Friday night. I don't know. Lack of top level diversity. I don't. I have zero interest in watching Tyrone with Love. It's fake. Black women do not date like that. That's some old white woman bachelorette shit. We don't run around kissing folks in the mouth, going on random dates. And stuff. We don't date like that. That formula does not work with black audiences. It never will because culturally we don't date like that. We don't run around. Black people don't run around kissing every man in the mouth they meet at the club. Black people, we don't hook up. We don't make out. Black, we don't do none of that. That's some white people shit. It just is. So those types of shows, bachelorette, bachelor style shows with predominantly black cast, it will never work because culturally we are not oriented like that. Y'all have got to know this. Like what marketing survey did y'all take that said this is what the fuck we want to see? Put that tired shit back on Friday and put Mary the Madison back on damn um, Sunday because what it's doing uh, because there's no rerun, people ain't seeing it on Friday. Then those that have seen it, so many days have gone by. The love has lost its shine. Folks really don't care on Monday because Housewives, the energy from Housewives has overrolled the energy from three days ago on Married to Medicine. I don't know whether to do a video or to just let it ride. You know what I'm saying? Because shit, I don't know who don't seen it. So y'all don't fuck that up. Move that wrong shit. From Rome until Friday night. I don't fucking around and got semi mad. I'ma call you later, girl. Bang.